Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm your host. I'm also the founder of the Order of Man podcast and movement. And of course, I want to be the first to welcome you here. This is a podcast dedicated to helping give you as a man the tools, conversations, resources, information that you need to thrive as a man. I got a message the other day from somebody that uh, was mocking our YouTube channel because they said something to the effect of, it's a sad state of affairs that men need to learn how to be men from other men. I thought that was a very strange comment because that's always been the way that it's been. Men need to learn from other men. Boys need to learn from men who have gone before. We've always operated in tribes and groups and packs. And it isn't until relatively recently that we've done away with that, that we've embraced this idea of the lone wolf uh, and that we've found ourselves in some of the positions societally that we found ourselves in. It's because men aren't doing it. Men aren't teaching other boys and young men and men how to behave like men which is the subject of not only this podcast, but the specific conversation that I'm going to have with you guys today. So it's not a sad state of affairs that men need to learn from other men. It's a sad state of affairs that it's not happening as often and as frequently as it should. And the result is despair and dangerous circumstances and situations like some of these school shootings that we've seen, uh, depression, suicide, gang-related activity, substance abuse, uh, physical and verbal abuse, addiction, pornography, all of the things that we know are wrong in society seem to have a correlation with a lack of masculine, manly men present, available, and ready to teach some of these concepts. So I'm going to hit on that today with you guys. Uh, I do want to share, we have a legacy event coming up. It's September 22nd through the 25th. This is a father-son event on my property here in Maine. I'm going to talk with you more about it at the end of the show, but it's, again, September 22nd through the 25th, 2022. We're going to do that here on my property in Maine. We're going to have a great time with jujitsu and uh, hiking and camping and learning how to shoot a bow, uh, doing airsoft, but then we're going to mix in some skills and some tools and some conversations that we as men need to have with, with our boys and some other activities I have planned for you. So if you're interested, you can go to orderaman.com slash legacy, orderaman.com slash legacy. All right, guys, let me get into this 10 surefire ways to turn boys into men. Number one is you have to be an example first. If you're hoping that boys will become men through osmosis, then it's safe to assume that the first thing we need to do is ensure that we're acting like the men that we would like them to be. We need to model that behavior. We can't expect that we're going to go out and be complete bums, and then they're going to turn into something other than what we've turned ourselves into. If you want the young men in your home and the young men within the community to start behaving and acting differently, then that's what you need to do. Lose weight, get in shape, build a business, serve the community, uh, lead your family, lead your, your community, lead your church congregations, and be the kind of man that you want these young men to be. When I was younger, I really didn't have a role model in my life until I was about 14 or 15 years old. And I had some coaches come into my life who showed me a better path than the one that I was on. It was those men who helped get me on the path I needed to be. I was getting into fights. I was drinking. I was getting into trouble. It was not going well for me. And it wasn't until I had righteous and capable men who came into my life who spoke to me differently, who had different conversations, who looked different, they acted different, they behaved different, people love them. I saw that and I picked up on all of that. So the, the, the change that we need to say, see starts with us first. It's always with us first. It's easy to say, hey, I'm gonna go uh, you know, make my impact in the world and not believe that you have to change yourself, but you do, you absolutely do. Number two is that you have to be present in these young men's lives. If you're not present, they're not going to pick it up. Occasionally, I'll say the most important parent in a young man's life is his father. I'll say that on social media. And I met with a, a, a broad array of feedback, positive and negative, when I do say that. Uh, but inevitably, I'll have somebody say, well, you know, the kid can have a father, but if he's not there, it doesn't matter. Right. That's exactly what I'm saying. When I say an engaged, present man, ideally in the home, I'm not talking about a bum. I'm not talking about a loser. I'm not talking about somebody who's drunk and high and 
completely disengaged from the family. Clearly, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is A, somebody who's setting an example. We just talked about that. And B, somebody who's present physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, checked in, engaged, being active with his sons, being active in the community, going where the young men are so that you can serve them more effectively, meeting them where they are, even mentally and emotionally. We can't expect to have any sort of impact on these young boys if we aren't willing and able to go where they are and meet them physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually where they might be. And that's what I mean when I'm saying be present, be in the moment, get your work done over here, be so good at all the other things that you're doing that you actually have the time and the resources to be able to uh, engage in, in your community and engage with these young men the way that they need to be engaged with. Number three comes down to communication. So the first five I'm going to address today are more of the soft skills and how you can behave. Uh, but the, the last five are actual physical things that you can do to be present in these young men's lives. But number three is the way we communicate with them has to be firm, but fair. There's a big difference generally between the way that men and women communicate. And overwhelmingly, a lot of our young men are only learning from other women. And it's not wrong that they're learning from women. It's not long, wrong that they're picking up on some of these cues, but it is wrong that they're not getting a masculine influence. And so what I see with men who have been raised by women who went through the public school system and were taught exclusively by women who never did any sort of sports, they grow up more feminine. Again, that's not wrong for a woman, but if a man can't learn to assert himself, if a, a man can't learn how to be assertive, if a man can't learn how to talk to other men, if he crumbles at the slightest sign of adversity or another man gets upset or frustrated with him, it's clear that he probably didn't have a man in his life. I know that was the case for me. I always had a really, really hard time identifying with other boys my age, with other men. Uh, I looked at assertive behavior as aggressive behavior. It was threatening to me. It was concerning to me. I lacked a lot of confidence as a young boy because I didn't have that masculine presence of strong, bold, assertive, firm communication. And I had they had that, I think life would have been differently. Now, I'm not complaining because I'm pretty happy with where I am, but I've had to learn these things along the way. I've had to learn how to communicate with other men and be engaged with boys. And it's always very interesting to see emotionally how a young man responds when he's only had women in his life. He's just not as mentally tough. He's just not as mentally resilient. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, Ryan, women are tough. And they're, yes, they're strong. They're tough. They're mentally resilient, but they communicate differently. And so when you get that firmness or that push or that kick in the pants that a young boy might need, and he's never been exposed to that before, he crumbles. I saw this in my military service. I saw a lot of guys who you could tell didn't have a dad around and or didn't play sports. And then a drill sergeant got in their face and all of a sudden it, life was over and they just could not function. So guys, we need to be sure that we're communicating with our young men in a firm way and a very uh, uh, fair way as well. The next one is that we need to be humble. We need to humble ourselves. We need to be open and receptive to what they need to learn. We need to realize that our job is to put ourselves out of work. I've often said that as a father, it's your job to render yourself obsolete. And I know I get, again, exceptions, nuance. Okay. You understand the point that I'm making when I say render yourself obsolete. I'm not saying you won't ever be there anymore. I'm not saying that you won't be loved or needed. What I'm saying is you don't, you aren't needed to function, to be a fully functioning, capable human being, you won't need your father, ideally. And that requires humility because as leaders, don't we want to be involved and don't we want to be in charge and don't we want to feel important? I know I see this with my two older boys, they're 14 and 11, and they're gaining a lot more independence lately. And to be honest, it's a little bittersweet. It's a little sour because They've been my boys for 11 and 14 years, and I've seen them grow, and they've needed me for everything. I've had to teach them everything. I'm with them every day, all day, and now they're thinking about girls, or they want to go hang out with their buddies, and they just don't need me as much, but that's good, and that's right, and that's the natural progression of things, but that requires a humble heart knowing that when they go out and they show independence and they're trying to assert themselves, 
that I'm doing it correctly. I don't need to be involved in every single decision. I don't need to be involved micromanaging all of my children's decisions. Granted, if they're younger, yes. As they get older, we let go and we step back and we become more humble and we let the process take place. And then number five, this is very important, guys. We need to be proud of the right things. So when our sons or young men in the community do something that's worth noting, that's masculine, maybe they stick up for somebody. Maybe it's the way they went aggressively harder at the gym or on the basketball court than they ever had. Maybe they ask a young woman on a date and they get rejected. Uh, Maybe they start a business and it doesn't go so well, or they start a business and it thrives. We need to be positive and proud and encouraging of proper behavior. And some of that behavior, a lot of society would say that's bad. When I see young boys compete, that's great behavior. That's the behavior we want in our young men. We want them competing righteously, doing it with morals and ethics and fairly. But we want them competing. That's what we want. When they're training to be big and strong and fast and even the capability of administering righteous violence, we want that in our men. We should be honoring that. We should be celebrating that. When they stick up for somebody, we shouldn't be suspending them from school because there's a zero policy, a zero, uh, what do they call it? A zero tolerance policy on fighting. It's like, well, hold on. There's maybe there's a reason. Let's figure it out. You know, maybe a young man decided to step up and protect somebody. And that's the reason he got in a fight. Should we be dismissive of that? Should we punish a young man for that? No, of course not. We should honor it. We should reward it. We should celebrate it. You know, it'd be really interesting is if two boys got into a fight at school and instead of just immediately suspending these children, instead, we actually figured out like police would do an investigation that the school said, okay, well, let's figure out what actually happened here. And then maybe we found out that one was being a bully to somebody else and pushed and shoved somebody else. And the other boy stepped up and defended that person. And you're going to expel or suspend that individual. You should honor him. Next time there's an assembly, hey, you know, we just want to honor so-and-so for for good behavior. He stood up for somebody else when he didn't have to. He put himself in harm's way. He protected somebody else. And we here at this school, we honor and we celebrate that. You see how different that is from society's standards? Oh, heaven forbid a boy fight. Heaven forbid he show any sign of aggression. Heaven forbid he be competitive. Heaven forbid he puts his head down and he charges and he works hard towards the things that he wants. We wouldn't want that, would we? Of course we want that. It's crucial that we have that. But unless we're willing to be proud about it and celebrate it and honor it, we will not see it to the degree that society needs. So let's shift gears here now, guys. I talked about in the first five, uh, more of the soft skills, the way that we behave, the way we do it. Now I want to talk about how we show up as men and specifically where we can show up. So number one, is you need to get involved in your school. Now, we homeschool, so obviously I'm very involved in the education of my children, but even outside of that, we need to be very involved in government schooling because if we're not, we're gonna let some real morons, to put it nicely, some some deranged lunatic morons dictate the tone of the conversation and the way that our young men are learning and growing up. Case in point is the point I made a minute ago. Zero tolerance policy on fighting. Even if there was a perfectly acceptable reason that somebody might actually get into a fight. I think that that's probably school policy that has been dictated by either women or misguided men. And it's unfortunate and it's harming our young men. So you need to get involved in PTA. You need to get involved in booster club or any of these sporting type organizations, fundraising type programs, uh, get involved in the school board, be present in your schools because this is where all of this stuff is happening. All right, there's no neutral ground, okay? If they're at home and they're learning from righteous and capable men, then they're gonna be on the right path. If they're at school and they're learning from degenerates and peers who don't have other men in their lives and adults, who are trying to indoctrinate them into dangerous and disgusting ideology when it comes to critical race theory and gender ideology and the zero tolerance kind of stuff. It's not good. It's not like it's neutral. 
that's actively working against our young men. And the only way to turn that tide is to fight the battle where it is. And the battle is on the school grounds. The battle is in the administration. It's in the conversations that elected officials are having. It's meet, school board meetings with the community. You need to go to those. You need to be involved. You need to be involved in Booster Club and PTA and all of these other parent-teacher organizations. Because if you're not, somebody else is doing it. And I can assure you that it's not going to be what you would like to see. And your voice needs to be heard. Number two is we need to start coaching youth sports more, right? I've coached for a long time, basketball, football, baseball, t-ball. I think I may have done soccer, uh, wrestling, jujitsu. I've coached all of these in some capacity. Now, some I'm fully capable and qualified to teach football, for example, to young men, probably not at the college level, but I could be in, in, involved at the high school level. Not any much more than that. Some of them, I'm not even qualified at all. What do I know about soccer? I never played soccer. I think I played one year when I was six years old. And yet I go because the coaches, they need help, as do our young men. So guys, if you have a son or a daughter playing sports, you might be the only other man in a young person's life. And, and your presence there, because we talked about presence earlier, is crucial. It's critical that you're there. When I was... Uh, coaching for my boys' baseball team and football, that's primarily what I did, it was always a bit disheartening to see how hard it was to find other men. I always had one to two coaches who would come help, and I'm extremely grateful for that, but it was so hard to find other men who were engaged and wanted to be present and could make the time. And I understand we have work commitments and we have other obligations and we have travel, but the, this is the most important thing. So get yourself into a position where you have the time and the money and the resources and the energy and capacity to step up and lead youth sports teams. I've had so many young men, boys, who I know that I was their only righteous and capable masculine present as a fixture in their weekly life. And it was usually two to three nights a week. And that's it. And that's all they got. They need more. We can do better on that. Number Three is community programs. Guys, there are so many different community programs that you can get involved with. I bet that if you went to the community center right now and you said, hey, how can I help? Where can I volunteer? What can I do for our young men? They would give you a laundry list item of, of things that you could do and the ways that you can get involved. But what I would also suggest is most communities, every community I've ever lived in, uh, usually has, especially in the summer, because that's where we're at right now, is they have um, after school programs, community uh, courses that are available. And you might know something about firearms or jujitsu or painting or photography or podcasting or web development or construction uh, or business communication or setting up business plans. Like there's things that you know. I'm not telling you to go out on a limb and talk about things you don't know, but if you went to the community center and you said, hey, I'd like to do a course every Wednesday night for four weeks on an intro to photography, and my age ranges are for boys between the ages of 10 to 18, because I want to teach them photography, or I want to teach young men, and maybe young women too, but I want to teach these young people uh, how to start a business, how to start a podcast, how to use social media better, whatever it might be. There's skill sets that you have. Just exert yourself. Just go to the community center and say, I want to do this. What's your deadline for putting together a course curriculum? And how often do I need to be involved? And what can I make work? And they would be ecstatic to have you get involved in your communities. Number, I said number three on the last one. It was actually number eight. So I'm on number nine now is within your church organization. Get involved in your church organization. There are men and I'm telling you, church is failing our men because it's overly feminized. It's, it's, it's not conducive to the way that men bond and connect and the way that we practice communication with each other is just not conducive for that. So what you can do is you can go to your pastor or your clergy member or your bishop or your preacher or whoever it might be. And you could say, I would like to put together a men's group. Or if there's already a men's group, figure out who's heading at men's group and ask to be involved. And then you guys can get together on a weekly basis, but you can also do this with a young men's group. Get two or three other fathers in your church congregation 
and go to the pastor, the head of the church and say, hey, we would like to put a program together for young men. And we're going to meet on Thursday nights at seven o'clock every Thursday at seven. And we're going to learn about the gospel. Uh, we're going to teach them principles. Some nights we're going to go shoot. Uh, other nights we're going to go bowling. Sometimes we're going to take them to other professionals to teach them about these things. When I was serving with the young men in our community through our church organization, uh, this was a couple of years ago. Uh, these are the things that we did. So we would, we would go, we would meet at the church and we would pray and we usually have a spiritual lesson. And then afterwards we would, I have uh, 40 airsoft guns. I would take the boys out South and we would go set up a course and we would do air, airsoft and shoot each other. Now you might hear that and think, Oh, that's not good. I don't know what man would think that, but believe it or not, there are, I can't believe you do that. Well, it was the funnest time we possibly could have had. And those boys are all together. They're learning from each other. They have us there as leaders, helping them to rein it in where needed and to wash their language and to act like gentlemen. Uh, we would go to, uh, one time we went to a dentist office. We had a dentist in our congregation. I said, hey, can I bring our young men on Thursday evening uh, to uh, just check out your work? And that's what we did. We did dinners in the community, actually within our church congregation. So we we picked a night, I think it was a Friday or Saturday evening, and we had all of the young ladies come to the dinner, and then the men had learned how to, how to welcome somebody in, how to pull out a chair, when to stand, when to sit, how to use the silverware, and how to be gentlemen, and how to actually interact with a young woman. And yeah, it was awkward and uncomfortable, but that's the point. they never done it before. There's so many things you can do within your church congregation, and the beautiful thing is everybody there already shares the same values. You guys wouldn't be part of the same congregation if you didn't share the same values. So I'm sure that your head of your church, pastor, preacher, bishop would be ecstatic if somebody would A, step up and create something like this, or B, just get more involved with the current program. Because I promise you, it could be doing better and you could be the catalyst for that growth. And guys, the last thing that I want to share with you today, so point number 10, 10 surefire ways to turn boys into men is run for elected office. Okay, we have to make changes at the city, the local, the state, and the federal level. We have to, because again, there's no neutral. Everybody's actively working against our young men. And whether it's by design or whether it's just the fallout from horrible, atrocious policy, it's ruining the lives of our young men. They are more and more likely to drop out of school. They are more and more likely to get into uh, drugs and alcohol, pornography, and other addictions. They're more likely to engage in violent situations. They're more likely to be depressed. They're more likely to go to prison. They're more likely to commit suicide. This is an epidemic against our young men. And we need to be in those elected positions to illustrate and introduce legislation that's actually going to enhance and improve the lives of not just our young men, but everybody. And that's the beautiful thing. When we go out and we serve our young men and we help raise them into men, then the entire community, all of society is served. It's better when there's righteous and capable and moral men doing what righteous, capable, and moral men do. Society is better. Crime rates go down. Poverty goes down. Wealth and abundance goes up. Fulfillment goes up. Safety improves. It's better when men are acting like men. And contrary to what that guy told me earlier about, it's strange that we live in a time where men need to teach other men how to be men. It's exactly what's needed. It's always been that way. And I want to make sure that we are continuing the traditions of our forefathers in, I don't want to say grooming because it has such a negative connotation, but helping these boys evolve into men. So let me do a recap real quick. Number one, be an example. Number two, be present. Number three, be firm, but fair. Number four, be humble and know that you're to put yourself out of work. Number five, be proud of the things that make them men. Violence, aggression, dominance, competitiveness, stoicism. Be proud when they exhibit those behaviors in proper ways. Number six, get involved with school, PTA, booster clubs, fundraiser activities, school board meetings, those sorts of things. Number seven, coach youth sports. Number eight, community programs. Number nine, church organizations with men and young men. 
And the last point that I wanted to make is run for elected office at the, the local, state, and or federal level. That's it. That's it. If we, if all of us did pulled out one or two of those things and just improved in one or two of those things, we would drastically within a, within a period of five to 10 years, we would radically and drastically improve the lives of tens, if not hundreds of millions of people around the planet. It's a worthy fight. It's a hill that I think is worth dying on. It's where I've planted my flag. You know, I hear a lot of people talking about the rise of fatherless homes and the epidemic of boys. And I'm wondering, as they're saying that, what are you doing about it? Are we just going to continue to talk about it on social media? Or are we going to start to implement some of these steps and more to improve not only our own lives and our families' lives, but the lives of the young men in our community and the people that they will eventually lead and serve? I hope you implement it. If you are, let me know. Share your resources, share your website, share your nonprofits, share your success stories. Uh, to tell, give me your testimonials. Like I want to hear about that stuff because this is so important to me and it should be important to everybody. I hope it is. And I hope we can make it more so. All right, guys, I'll be back next week. Actually, no, sorry. Before I leave, we have our legacy event again, September 22nd through the 25th. If you're wondering how to get your boys involved in something like a program that's designed as a rite of pas passage to usher them into manhood, our legacy event is a great thing to do. Uh, we do jujitsu every morning. We'll go on hikes. We'll have campouts. We'll do some basic survival stuff. There's a lake that we're going to do a little swimming um, and, and a couple of relay activities. Uh, we have other activities designed to push and, and test and forge these guys mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. It's an amazing, amazing three and a half day experience. You can check it out at orderaman.com slash legacy. It's for fathers and their sons. And when I say father, biological, adopted, foster, uh, stepchild, nephew, you guys get the point of boys between the ages of eight to 15. Again, orderaman.com slash legacy. Hope to see you guys there. All right, guys, we'll be back next week. Until then, go out there, take action and become the man you are meant to be.